morning. So today we're going to do some uh, landing challenges. And uh, I'll try and talk through a little bit of what I'm doing and what's going on and why I'm doing what I'm doing whenever uh, whenever I'm doing them. So uh, we'll just go through them in order, I think. And start uh, probably with the easier ones, maybe. Maybe we'll do one from Famous, one from Epic, one from Strong Wind. And then go back through them again and do the next one. Something like that. So the first one is in a Cessna Citation. Jackson Hole Jackson. No idea why this is uh, famous. So it's decent length of runway, 6,300 feet. This is quite high up, 6,500 feet above mean sea level. So. You get less uh, engine performance and things whenever you're at higher altitudes, so that makes landing a little bit harder. Also, your plane will have a higher true air speed and a higher ground speed, so that makes things happen a little bit quicker. And the plane has a lot more kinetic energy to stop on the runway. So it's saying that uh, 130 knots and 110 knots later on, we're landing on runway 19 and the wind's 180 degrees at 4 knots, so it's pretty much straight down the runway. Yeah, it's varying a bit, it's pretty much there. Uh, so we've got an indicated airspeed of 140 knots, stall speed with flaps up. Is 105, so let's stay above that. So, as always, flight simulator spawns you way out of trim, so I'm giving it nose up trim to try and get that back on. And you can see here our little s speed vector. So, this pink string showing where your speed's gonna be. So we need to add a bit of power to try and stabilize that. You can also see the runway over there. I think we've got gear and flaps down already. The outside view. I don't know what all the differences is in the citations, but uh, I remember in the old f uh, flight sim I had a Citation CJ3, but I'm not sure the difference in the CJ4, probably just a newer version, bigger engines. Would help if it turned already. So I'm going to reduce the power a bit. Start going down. So in a jet, you descend and you pitch for your descent rate, and you use your power for your airspeed. So if you need, if your airspeed gets low, then you add more power. And some planes, if you add more power, you'll have to push forward as well because you've got engines mounted under the wings and they give you a pitch up moment, but. This is engines mounted on the tail, so it shouldn't really give any pitching moments or anything. I definitely need to check how to raise the seat. Oh, 
Well, that was pretty shocking, actually. Come on. That was a good flyby to start. Fairly shocking first landing. <coughs> yeah, that was absolutely dire. Anyway, I'm going to have a look at the controls just quickly to uh, see how or if there is a way to raise your seat up. Aha! Decrease cockpit view height, increase cockpit view height. Up and down. So is that the arrow keys? Is that what up and down is? I guess it is. Yep, okay. That's easy. Should have known that already. Would have made things a bit easier. Let's go epic then. Aspen, USA, same plane, is it? Yeah, CJ4 again. High altitude, they all seem to be high altitude, so this is 8,000 feet. No, yeah, 8,000 feet above main cell level, pretty much. Runway is 3 3. So 160 knots, 140 knots, and 130 knots. And we've got uh, crosswind 30 knots from 0 and 5 degrees, so that's about 45 degrees off runway. So that'll be a little bit of crosswind, and it'll also push us in this turn. So we need to start turning earlier. 1 degree of runway slope, that's not much. We've already got the gear down. Stall speed's 105 again, and we're at a final approach speed of 130. And as always, it's out of trim, and it's pretty turbulent as well at the moment, actually. So I guess we're flying down this valley. Take some power off. The gear's down already. Ah, oh, look at that. Look how easy it is just to raise your seat up. Oh my goodness, that's going to make things so much easier. Oh, there's the runway. So I guess we'll slow to 140 knots now. Put the last stage flap down. Retrim for 140. So you use the thrust of the engines to keep the speed. How we point the plane where we want to descend to. The two go hand in hand. So if you don't have your speed set and right and your aircraft trim, your descent rate's probably going to go way off as well for the pitch that you've got. Alright, I've got to slow the final approach speed now, which is 130. Probably should have done this before the turn. 
way a bit high, so push the nose down. Might need to take a bit of power off because we've pushed the nose down. That's looking decent, we're a wee bit high. Just by the pitch of the runway you can tell. I'm going to put these markers, the big yellow, sorry, big white blocks at the same point in the windscreen and hold them there. And then we're going to take off the power, pull it back. And smack it in. Well, at least we can see over the combing now, that's good. So I floated a bit on this. Keep floating this uh, Cessna. That oh, wasn't bad, but it was still pretty... <laughs> Go back and do the next one. We'll do the windy one. Donegal, Ireland, here we go, this is going to be fun. I don't know what this plane is, is it a beach? Yeah, it's a beach bonanza, okay. Whenever I was learning to fly, there was a flight training organisation beside us that flew these, for Lufthansa. So you used to hear Bonanza 65 Alpha, in a German accent all the time. Uh, northwest corner of Ireland, yes, where it always rains. Donegal, single runway airfield, spectacular wild Atlantic way. Scenery looks pretty cool for it actually. Uh, so the runway is 2-1 that we're landing on. It's basically at sea level so no real performance considerations for that. 4,900 feet long. That should be fine for a Beechcraft Bonanza. And uh, gives 90 knots and 79 knots for a final approach speed. Runway's 2-1 and the wind's at 2-1-5 at 23 knots, so quite windy, but more or less down the strip. If you don't know what way runway orientations work yet, it's based on a compass. So runway 2-1 is 210 degrees, so that means that the runway's facing 210 degrees. So uh, in a south-westerly direction in that case. Uh, no slope. Quite windy. Right. Very windy. Typical Irish day. No idea where the runway is yet. This guy's just about VFR, friggin' 680 feet and just about can see the ground. Uh, so we said the runway was 210. Still can't see it anywhere. Is the runway? Oh, there it is. Okay. All right, we'll slow the final approach speed down to so 79 knots. Gear down. Oh, this is a hurry approach. So what happens when you have no visibility. And it's raining a little bit too. Let's get back on the profile.
Well, the wind's only like 10 degrees off the runway, if, if even with the windsock, but it's you can really feel it. Well, it was a bit of a terrible approach, but couldn't really see where the runway was. So. That was alright in the end, I guess. Uh, let's do the next one at Finchai and then we'll work our way backwards. We're in a scare bus this time. Uh, runway 05, winds at 030, so off the left hand side of the runway this time, so coming down the hills, so that might be a bit bumpy. 160 knots, 140 knots for final approach speed. Slurp of cool tea. Uh, so it's at sea level, there's no slope. So they managed to make the runway flat, they just decided to put it next to a mountain. That was a great idea. Yeah. Uh, 175 knots, stall speed with flaps of 175 knots, but we're gonna have flaps down eventually. So. Uh, I don't like being this close to stall speed already, so we'll put first stage of flap down, give us a bit more of a buffer. That means we can go to 160 knots then, I guess. Ah, look, I can look up and actually see where the runway is. Let's level out here for now until we get closer and just disconnect auto throttle Alright, gear down, flaps full, slow into 140 knots. Well, sorry, I did the descent, but it was about 700 feet per minute until we hit that gust, so that was pretty good. Engines are working hard. Try and keep the speed around 140. Alright, we're on 4 wide at the minute, so we're a bit high. So we've got 1200 feet per minute rate of descent, that should get us back on the profile again. Yeah, there we're coming back in now. So we're going to pitch up a little bit. Try and get like 700, 800 feet per minute. 400. Now we're low. Really low. Okay, that's it coming back in. Take the thrust back off. Try and fly that point. <laughs> Well, the second landing might have been closer. Didn't seem to want to flare there, run out of airspeed, I think. <laughs> if it's not Boeing, I'm not going. That was pretty dire, yep.
Uh, right, let's go back. Need something that's not an Airbus. I pulled back the flare and it just literally did nothing, so I guess I was maybe a bit on the slow side. Next time I fly an Airbus, I might try and hold a little bit faster speed. Okay, let's go epic. Course of all, well, we've done this one loads in the uh, online competition in the Robin at the minute. It's quite good fun. 85 knots final approach speed this time. Bit of a headwind, which turns into a crosswind. It's only 40 degrees off, 7 knots. Wow, Flight Sim loves to put you in the game with no trim. It's bumpy today again too. Alright, where is the runway? Alright, we'll bring the speed back to the white arc. And the speed tape, where it turns from green to white. And then that means we're above the uh, flap extension speed, so... Stick one stage. We'll put the gear down. There's the runway. There's a bit of guesswork in all these to try and get the right uh, descent rate. Because they don't really give you any guidance on descent rate. They just say 185 knots here, 100 and whatever knots here. Doesn't really help you whenever you're trying to plan your approach. Uh, if anything, I think we're a bit higher than we need to be. So in a small plane, you do the opposite to a jet. You use your throttle to adjust your descent rate and your uh, pitch for speed. So you basically keep it in trim. I don't know whenever the two cross over, probably whenever it becomes a jet, I guess, you change it the other way. So we need to descend a bit more, pro well no, actually it's probably looking good. Probably a bit less actually, so I'll put a bit more power on. And you should see the descent rate is, in is uh, decreasing, so. Alright, we've got that wind from the left hand side. So we're going to point the nose slightly to the left. Not much, just enough of a... They call it a crab. So, because you're kind of walking sideways, flying sideways. It's actually looking quite good, surprisingly. A little bit of a flirt. Too much of a flirt. Had to smash it in. Yeah, I keep floating in all of them. It seems to uh, really screw you up whenever you float. Well, maybe I need to decrease my sensitivity and my pitch a little bit. Don't know. It's very seems very hard to get it to just flare the right amount. That's one of the problems with flight sim, I guess. You don't have any feel. Here's somewhere I've been plenty. Let's go land there. I've been there plenty in a 747 as well. So we're landing on 3-1 left, which actually you would never really land on. Don't think I've ever landed on 3-1 left. I've taken off a lot on it. Normally if you were landing on 3-1s, we would land on 3-1 right. If you're coming in from this direction, it ends up being in what they call a Canarsi approach, which is famous in New York. It ends up with this big sweeping turn where you're kind of doing like 30 degrees of bank at 300 feet. This is, seems to be a, a favorite as well. 
four right. It's quite short. So that's an ILS approach. Normally whenever you're coming to New York, you spend your whole way across the Atlantic just basically planning for how the New York controllers are going to screw you up. So, sorry if you're a New York controller. <laughs> they're really good, they're just too busy all the time. 140 knots again. 340 at 15 knots, 30 degrees off from the right hand side. Wind's always something you should be thinking about whenever you're landing. Where, what direction it's coming from. I mean, my scores haven't really been fantastic, but yeah. We'll try and do better this time. It's a good old jumbo jet. If I don't land it well, I'll be disappointed. Probably float it as well. Jumbo's very easy to float. It's got such a big wing. Really power of our elevator. It floats really easy. Whenever you get to about 200 feet in a real jumbo, you have to actually kind of start pushing forward a little bit to keep it coming down because the wing goes in the ground effect at 200 feet. Starts getting building a big cushion of error below it because it's so big. The other thing that's really important in a jumbo is you've always got to fly the wing until you're stopped. So even after you touch down, you've got to keep putting the aileron in to counteract the wind because the wind just picks up the wing so easy. I've taxied out here loads of times before, that looked pretty cool. Uh, sea level, no slope, 180 knots, stall speed flaps up. Well, I hope we're not doing flipping, I hope we've got some flap out then. Looks like we do, yeah. So that's right. What are we at? We're at flap 20, okay. So we should have the gear down. Gear down flap 20 is what we normally do. Let's say 140 knots again for the speed. I'm going to put 145 in the window, five knots above it. So we're back to pitch for descent rate and your thrust or your power, or whatever you want to call it, for your speed. I guess this is probably the only time I'll ever land on this runway, to be honest, in flight sim. Be nice to have a glide slope or something, but enjoy the view over Long Island. Right. Gotta go full flap 30. Probably in real life, if you were landing this runway, you would use flap 25. You would have worked out your performance and stuff, obviously, to figure out how what distance you need to stop. There's only a five knot difference, I think it was, between flap 30 and flap 25 in the jumbo. So most of the time we use flap 25 as a landing flap, which it landed far nicer on. But it also meant that you were causing less noise and less pollution. So it was the favorite flap. You only used flap 30 if you needed it for performance. There's New York in the distance, I guess that's why we're using this runway for uh, flight sim. You got a cool view of New York City out there. Big display threshold, I think, on this runway, so actually the touchdown zone is probably way down there. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's 
just so easy to flare too much in this. In real life, like, you have to kind of give it a good tug on the joystick. It's like literally a tiny, tiny pull back and it's too much. Still a decent score considering we floated miles, but... That was a pretty stable approach the whole way. 164th, I mean I could have done a lot better than that if I actually had to put it on the ground where I was meant to. Right, so we've done the jumbo. Next one's Nice, let's do that. Back to the little stuff again. Oh, this is the famous approach in Nice over the bay. Never done this, for real. I heard about it. Apparently it's a bit of a nightmare. I think Nice is a bit of a nightmare in general. We're landing on 2 your right. Slight wind from the left. I don't know if this is a surface wind or an average wind or... No idea. Must be the surface wind, I guess. So a bit off from the left hand side, so it's going to push us out into the bay, so we'll have to turn a little bit inside. I mean, their whole landing thing is a bit meh. It should be kind of based on your touchdown speed and maybe a bit less on feet per minute because a good landing isn't at not feet per minute necessarily, but in fact, if you land in the wet at not feet per minute, you're probably going to aquaplane. And anyway, what do I know? Let's keep going. It was 70 knots or 80 knots again, I think. I can't really remember what this plane was now. 85 knots, maybe? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Love the south of France. Which runway am I going for? I can't even remember. I think there's two parallel runways here. I can't remember which one I was meant to be landing on. Alright, uh, gear down, full flap. Let's take a sneak. Oops, wrong button. Okay, I can't get back in. <laughs> Why won't it go back in? There we go, thank you. That oh, must be the left. Uh, no, it's the right runway, yeah, the right. bit slow. But 400 feet per minute is probably right for this speed. Obviously the higher your approach speed, the higher your descent rate needs to be. Because you're covering more ground, so you need to go down quicker. On a single engine piston style of thing like this, probably 400 feet per minute, 500 feet per minute, it's probably a bit much, but on a jet, typically 140 knots or something, that's about 700 and something feet per minute on a 3 degree glide path, which is 
generally pretty standard unless you're going somewhere a bit different. Let's cut the power. Bit of a sl I went for the in point rather than uh, the greaser. I should probably concentrate more on keeping it straight whenever I'm landing. Keeping it on the center line. Yeah, I mean, I didn't hit it that hard. I thought it actually was harder than that. Where's next? Got time for a couple more before I have to stop for a bit. Alright, done course of all. Alright, that's the Paro in an Airbus again, so let's see if I can actually remember the flare this time. Don't know if it's something with an Airbus, like whenever you pull back, like, just doesn't. You flare in a normal plane and you over flare and you float. In Airbus, you flare and it just keeps going down. <laughs> don't know what the difference is. If anybody watches this and actually knows what the difference is in this game or in real life, you can let me know, that'd be great. 151705 knots, slightly off. Might make it harder to turn on finals. What are we at? Uh, high elevation again, 7,300 feet. Wow. That's really high. Oh, my window wiper is on there. That was weird. Alright, we've already got full flop. Gears already died. Uh, bug 145. Gotta take the auto throttle off. I'm gonna raise the seat up a bit so I can actually see where I'm going. I don't know why they leave the default view so low. This is cool, look at that, the rainbow. It's nice. If we go outside, will we get, be able to get back in again? This is the question. Alright, let's get the speed back, get the descent going down, we're high, 145 knots, we've got a bit of a headwind now, that'll make turning on the finals a little bit easier, got a crazy crazy descent rate, so Gotta pitch up a bit. Wow, this is a cool approach. Oh my goodness! Get down! <laughs> <laughs> Smashed it in. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty hard one, that. I just can't get used to the control on our buses. It really just does not feel right. I don't know if it's just a game. It always seems to lag or something. That was a terrible, terrible score. <laughs> I might do that one again, actually, because I mean, my score actually. The scores for this one are quite bad. Let's try it again, see if we can get higher up. I guess people think this one's hard or something. It is hard. 
So I need to start going down a bit earlier. I need to be a little bit lower in this segment. I was quite high there. That would have made things easier if I wasn't rushing to try and get the height off. Here's the window wiper again for the crack. Alright. Oops. Speed brake was out last time, I think. That's probably why my descent rate was so high. <laughs> Let's try and use the auto throttle this time. Let's do stuff our bussy. Let's see how good the auto throttle is. This would be so cool in VR. There's my radio altitude, which is my height directly above the ground. It's ticking down a lot. Which is because the terrain's changing underneath the airplane. You can see my barometric altitude. Oops. Here. It's going down just gently. Oh, it does actually work. Right, so it's in speed, so it should hold the speed until it says those famous Airbus words. Not directed at the pilot, I hope. Uh, we cut in a wee bit tighter this time as well, so I've got less of a turn on finals. There's 500 coming up. 500. Oh, we're into the headwind now. 400. 300. 200. 60, 50, 40, 30, 20. Why is it turning? <laughs> it kept turning to the left. I have no idea why. Uh, a lot of other on into the right to try and get it to straight night. I think it was pretty much full in the end. I mean, that was better. If it still wasn't great. <laughs> it was mega off, and it wasn't very smooth. Oh well, let's do something else. That was fun though. Uh, I just can't get, I maybe need to go and do some circuits or something or just get used to it. I can't, can't get used to it in this game at all. Especially turning at the same time. Our next epic. Oh, that was what we just did, wasn't it? So, so we're basically like halfway through them. Almost, we've got the... Uh, oh, we haven't done this yet actually, we haven't done Gibraltar. Let's do that. Another Airbus one. What could go wrong? It seems that leaving the auto throttle in seems to help a lot. I don't know if the model's that... Maybe that's the way an Airbus actually is, I don't know. Anyway, we landed on runway 09. And we have a big wind from 100 degrees, 24 knots. Which will push us out this way a lot, but uh, it's straight down the runway, so uh, it should get stopped pretty quick. Like this big cushy headwind. It's called 10 knots of headwind training, Captain Weller, because it always meant you're going to grease it on. Twenty-four knots is a bit much. Right, we've got full flap already. Gears down. Speed brakes armed. Wow. <laughs> Speed's really low. Speed's really bouncing around.
don't know what the descent profile is in here. This thing's bouncing around a lot. I think this is like, is this is south of south of Spain. So is this Malaga or somewhere that meets Gibraltar? I can't remember. Somewhere like that. There's the runway. We're high at the minute, and we're in level flight. So I'm gonna just drop the nose a bit. Auto throttle still in, so it's actually doing an all right job of managing the speed at the minute. There's a lot of turbulence. I'm not touching anything, it's just bouncing around everywhere. Alright, I'll start going down a bit more. I'm gonna start turning on. This is where you're gonna get a flipping low speed event here. Jeepers, so. Look at that, it's like just bouncing so much. Alright, four whites, so we need to do something about that. So we're gonna increase the descent rate. We're at 1450 per minute, which is ridiculous, like crazy, crazy fast if it was real life, but it's not. Uh, it's starting to look alright actually to me, so uh, it's a wee bit high, yeah. I wouldn't have said it was four whites high. So we're looking for two red, two white on the poppy. Which are the uh, lights beside the touchdown markers. Still four, okay, it's coming in now. So. Gust. Oh my goodness. Alright, that would be a go around. <laughs> go around. Touchdown was cancelled, yes. That's because I got a mad gust. Let's try it again. That takes ages though, but yeah, let's try it again. It's quite good fun. It's really annoying, it just gets a mad big gust. Maybe I don't need to do anything, I don't know. Our bus pilots can let me know, hopefully. If anybody sees it in the future. Maybe just leave it. I think there's something about our bus where it kind of suppressed his gusts or something, but I think it's a bit of a black, up, black art. Oops, wrong button. Off path descent, that's not what I wanted to do. I did not want to do off path descent. I did this engage manage mode now. Oh dear dear. Alright, we're gonna have to go manual thrust this time because I've already messed the thing up. Alright, so the runway's over there somewhere. We've got wind behind us at the minute. We're descending on a kind of shallow. I might start nipping in actually. Speed, that speed's too low for this. It used to be like. Oh, uh, there's no bug anyway, but. By bug I mean there would be a little purple thing here on the P 
PFD on this sh uh, speed string, but there's nothing there at the minute. This is looking a bit better until it starts bouncing around. It's just so gusty in this. And I've overshadowed them. Standard. So we've got blown through the, the center line, so we've actually got a crosswind from the right as well, so we've got to go even more pointed off the runway heading to get back onto it again. We're also getting it a little bit high, so we're going to have to pitch down a little bit. And because I'm pitching down, it'll have to take a bit of power off so the speed doesn't go too high. 500. That'll be coming back on nicely now. 400. Put a bit of drift on for the wind so we keep on the center line. 300. That's a bit too much. <laughs> and a bit high. There's always a mad gust you get somewhere around here, so... 100. There's the gust. Oh, it's better. Still not great. Oh, the scores for this one are pretty dire as well, actually. All right, let's do. Uh, I got time for one more, and I'll have to go for now. Uh, yes. Uh, let's do something which looks really cool. Uh, epic, let's go epic. Uh, uh, I guess we'll just do this one. This is the next one to do. Said Bart's. Eighty-five knots on the runway one zero. Oh, this is the one that goes down the hill. This is the this is the one. There's a video of a, I think it's a Seneca crashing on, going into the beach, and flipping over. Whenever I put this video on YouTube, I might put a little, a little playback of it, just to show not what to do. Oh no wait, hold on. What direction are we coming in? Are we la I think we're landing on one zero, aren't we? That's one zero. Oh yeah we are. There it's perfect. Cool. Landing gear, yes. Yes, we do have landing gear. Alright. True flight sim fashion. We spawned in out of trim, so trimming back a little bit, get the whole thing stabilized out. Try and hold it that thousand feet for now. I bleed the speed back a little bit so we take the power off. Had a turbo problem, not sure what way you're meant to do things with regards to pitch and descent rate and air speed trimming, but well uh hope for the best and just 
do it the jet way. Oh, we're in the sun as well, that's gotta make things easier. Not. Can't see a flipping thing. Okay, let's go full flop. Yes, you're getting your wishes, my command. Landing gears down. 85 knots, I think, was the final approach speed. I can't really remember it anymore. I've got so many speeds in my head. Well, we're on 1 0, but I can't see if there's an actual runway behind the big hill or not. Alright, we've got a gear of flaps down. Don't know what else would be in the line and check us for this thing, there's no speed break. Oh, there's the runway there, okay. Could just about see it with a reflection of the sun. So I'm a bit high, so I'm gonna. Uh, Pitch down a bit more, take a little bit of power off so the speed doesn't build up too much. There's a big tree sticking out this side, so I might just nip over to the right a little bit. Maybe a bit more power off. There's a great thing about turbo props, you could whenever you take power off it just becomes a big break on the front or propeller. Wow, this is bumpy as well. Okay. Idle. Oh, bouncer. Reverse thrust. That wasn't bad. By flight some sand standards anyway. Apparently that's all that matters. Alright, that'll do for now. I'll have to uh I'll put this on YouTube and then I'll do some more stuff later. I'll put a link in there for the uh, Twitch stream. And uh, yeah, if there's any Airbus boys out there, let me know how to fly one because so far they seem fairly disgusting. See you later.